I'm James Beckwith, President and CEO of Five Star Bank. As a community bank, we believe that open dialogue about the issues affecting our region is vitally important. From the economy to the environment to social issues, we look forward to the conversations and hope you'll join in. Welcome to Studio Sacramento. Access, affordability, and excellence. These three words define the historic mission of California's Master Plan for Higher Education. Starting under Governor Pat Brown in 1960, California built a system of higher education that was the envy of the world. But is it still today? And what does that answer mean for the next generation of California's kids? Joining us today are Bryce Harris, Chancellor of the Los Rios Community College District. Alexander Gonzalez, President of Sacramento State University, and Linda Katehi, Chancellor of the University of California at Davis. Welcome to the program. Today is the master plan for higher education in California. Is it a myth or is it still a reality? Well, it has been left a memory, I think. A memory. Right. Uh, that was a, the master plan was a partnership, was a contract between higher education and the state of California and really produced a, a wonderful system. It became, in fact, I would say, the engine behind the uh, success in the state, the um, uh, economic development, the ability to improve quality of life. I mean, the state became the golden state in the U.S. for so many years. and. The master plan and the institutions of higher education were a big part of it. But the state has walked away. This partner really has given up. Given up? But if this master plan, which was considered to be the jewel of the economic engine of California, world renowned, world renowned. You know, one thing that is often said is that you can tell what a person values by looking at their check register. What does our state government value looking at the check register yeah. as it's applied to higher education today? Uh, Alex? I, think, I think the structure <clears throat> is still exists. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I think the mission and the fact that we're driven by our mission is still there, but I think Linda's right. I mean, it is gonna be a memory very quickly. Uh, you can see all the indicators of that happening. We now call what used to be fees are now tuition, and I think everyone has accepted that. Uh, our students now, for the first time in, in the California State University, more of our revenue is going to be coming from students than it will from the government. So that's the retrenchment that's occurred in higher ed, mm -hmm. and it really does threaten, to me, the future of California. Mm -hmm. I agree with my uh, colleagues. I, I think that uh, w when I entered higher education in the early 70s, um, and, I, and I, I entered in the Midwest, uh, everything that was exciting about American community colleges was going on in the state of California. They were opening a college a week out here at one point, and uh, uh, Californians were the beneficiary of an open access environment where anybody who wanted to go to college and could benefit from a higher education could get into one of these institutions, a community college and ultimately transfer to the CSU or the UC. Unfortunately, uh, today, uh, the students even coming right out of high school who uh, expected to be able to go to a community college or a CSU or a UC are too often uh, uh, faced with a closed door. Well, let's build on that for a second, Bryce. You've shared in the past and other speaking engagements uh, that you've made about how the decisions we're making today are not only impacting the students that you all are serving right now, but are going to essentially cause a massive backup through the system of the children that are coming up through K through 12. Can you give us a, a little bit of insight into how that works? Well, I think that uh, all three of our institutions, because they are impacted, are, are uh, directly uh, denying access, rationing education to Californians. And, and I think we're in danger of an entire generation of Californians not having access to higher education. And that doesn't mean everybody, but it means an increasing number of students that can't 
can't get into the U University of California and therefore uh, try to get into the California State University and those can't get in, they try to come to us and we're finding uh, that we're rationing classes, they can't get in and instead of taking instead of taking a year or two to get through uh, one uh, segment of mm -hmm. higher ed and then another, it takes them three or four. Mm -hmm. Instead of taking uh, getting a bachelor's degree in what would be four or five years, it now takes six or seven or more. Mm -hmm. That slows down those folks' pathway to uh, a better job and, and frankly it slows down the pathway to increased wages and, and taxes for the state of California. And you, as a parent, and I'm trying to afford to send my kids to college and I'm looking at the state systems, it's hard enough to be able to afford to send a kid to college, especially with declining grants, okay. Pell grants, Cal grants, financial aid, but in extending the time as well, the burden that that puts on families is tremendous. Is yeah. tremendous. In fact, our, our students are telling us that they, they face their families and they face tremendous problems and one of them is um, the difficulty they're facing in admissions. In fact, this year UC Davis refused admission to 1,500 or more students with a 4.0. You, you right. refused 4.0? Yes, um, because the, we have a growing number of students who are capable and have the potential who want to come to the university and we have not been able to increase the number of positions we have for the students because of the limited funding by the state. In fact, 75,000 of our students have not been funded by the state. Now the state recalculated, of course they are giving us less per student, but we still have thousands of students who are not funded and that has put a lot of fun. Um, yeah. uh, the other thing the students are uh, focusing on is this uh, time to graduation because it's not just that tuition has grown substantially in the last at least uh, three years that I've been here, but also the financial situation in the state and the financial difficulties in their families are forcing those kids to get off school and work and then come back and that really extends their time away from the workforce which is so the the overall impact on them is bigger than just the tuition or th what they have to pay extra until they graduate. Yeah, it, it's about the cascading effect is really hurting everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what Bryce said, if you can't get into the University of California it cascades down to the CSU, cascades down. But the real issue now is really access. Financial aid is part of it. Mm -hmm. It's access. Who gets in and who doesn't? And if you look at the financial burden that uh, has been placed on our students, it's those students in the middle that are really getting hurt the most. If in, in our systems, both the uh, University of California and California State University, those students who are most neediest uh, will still have some assistance in being able to uh, attend the university. And those students who are wealthy, well, they'll be able to afford it. When it's still affordable at that level, it's that middle class student or the student that's not, independent. Not rich enough. Not rich but enough, not poor, enough, not poor enough, or independent <clears throat> that is really having to, you know, take on that burden and the responsibility mm -hmm. of uh, attending the university and taking on debt. And unfortunately in our institutions it's often the educationally and economically most disadvantaged students because as the students cascade down they, they tend to be more sophisticated students, more educationally savvy. And so as the classes fill up right away, the, in our institutions often the uh, educationally disadvantaged students, the ones that struggled in high school and really need access to to a community college, especially career and occupational programs, uh, those courses are full, they can't get in. And so what, what it sounds like almost is that the social compact between the citizens and their expectations as to having a system that's going to be there for them is it, the basic assumptions are framed. It's yeah, broken. Right. That is true and as a matter of fact in terms of what that is going to do to the state and the public is a major threat for their quality of um, life. Because if you hear from the statistics, um, the unemployment among students who have a four-year bachelor's degree is 4%. And the unemployment among high school graduates is in double digits. Mm -hmm. So what happens when a very large number of kids in the state of California cannot have access to a two or a four-year 
uh, education is that those kids will have a future where unemployment will be a big part of it. And that's what we are doing to them. Well, let me just, again, sitting in the, in the role of a parent, I'm on my kids every day about get good grades so that you can get into yeah. college. But when you share that someone with a 4.0 GPA and above can get turned aside because there just isn't a spot for them, mm -hmm. once that message starts to cascade, to use your term, Alex, through the population, what do we advise our kids? What well, do we tell and, them? And they're leaving the state. Right. If you look at our uh, transfer numbers, they are relatively flat to UC and CSU because they don't have any place for our students to go. The, the uh, line of transfers to out-of-state public and private is skyrocketing. And, and unfortunately, some of those students will leave the state of California and not return. Yeah, and their families too. Yeah. Because some of them, their families will leave. Mm -hmm. to be able to go to a different state and then become citizens of them in um, residence and then allow their kids to go there. Let me put it in a different context though. <clears throat> the, um, uh, Linda raised uh, the issue of, of uh, admission denial, if you will. Sacramento State and the CSU, uh, you know, basically has been pretty open, open admissions in that sense. Uh, for the last couple of years, we've been denying admission to students as well. But even more importantly, our programs that are impacted, our business, we're mission-driven. Business people, mm -hmm. engineers, nurses, teachers. We have a nursing program, for example. The, the types of programs that employers say that we have to absolutely. have competitive. Right. The accountants in the area, where mm -hmm. do they come from? They come from Sac State. Mm -hmm. The nurses, they come from Sac State. Our nursing program alone uh, admits less than one-third of the applicants because wow. we don't have any room. Yeah. And most of those students are upper division. They may transfer from community college. Uh, and usually the minimal qualification is going to be a 3.7 or 3.8. So these statistics and the picture you painted, if we were sitting here with your colleagues from all three systems in Southern California in the Central Valley, this message is probably going to have a lot of similarities to mm -hmm. it. Absolutely. Well, statewide mm -hmm. uh, in community colleges, we estimate the number to exceed 300,000 students that will be turned away mm -hmm. in the next year or so. Mm -hmm. And it, do the people who are making the decisions over a mile and a half from the studio, do they hear the message? Are they not getting the data? Well, I think they're, they're <clears throat> struggling with, with two things. First mm -hmm. of all, we've known this tidal wave of enrollment has been coming. When you look at the demographics, you can see it for a number uh, of years. And, and I think they uh, tried to prepare for that, but then we had this economic challenge at the same time. So they're, forcing unpre uh, they're facing unprecedented numbers of students that want a higher education and an unprecedented budget uh, challenge. We, we, you know, the reality of it is, and I'll just use the CSU as an example, we are going to be admitting between 25 and 30,000 less, fewer students this year, this coming year. We have a budget that's equivalent to 1997. Mm -hmm. Yet, in the CSU, the entire system, we're educating more than 90,000 90, more students than we did then. So you do the, the math or the arithmetic. It's very simple. So for the, people, or for the people at home that are hearing this information for the first time and they're, they want to get engaged, any suggestions on what they might do? Could I um, say that the, the budget is a real problem. Mm -hmm. And we all understand that the state needs more revenue. But it's also an issue of commitment to higher education. And so talking about the people who are at home and what they could do is just to advocate for education as a part of their children's future. That's all we want them to do. And if they see it as such, then they will put it in the right priority. And, and, you know, the, if I can and add check, on. And that check register may change. Exactly. Right? But if I can That's add right. on, it has to, uh, everyone in California, the baby boomers, those who are retired who don't have children anymore who think, well, it doesn't really bother me, it doesn't affect me, it's, it, it's going to affect everyone. Absolutely. And everyone has to support yeah. higher ed because that's what's going to make 
California great again. Well, you know, I do have to put out this one question. You know, when we talk about supporting infrastructure investment and long-term investments, and, and higher education is a long-term investment, the, the comments, the blowback is always, oh, you know, we pay people too much money. The professors teach one class a semester. They spend all their time sort of like in conferences and, and writing papers that nobody reads. And if we would just put everybody on the Internet and make everybody teach five classes a week, we'll solve our problem. The, we have enough money to solve yeah. the problem. Well, I think, you know, one of the, the misconceptions is that we are not uh, efficient and effective institutions to begin with. And I think the best thing that, that I can do to underscore how hard our folks are working is to say that of the 85,000 students enrolled in our system, we're not being paid by the state for 9,900 of those. So those are 9,900 people that are attending our colleges. The size, by the way, of Folsom Lake College that our faculty, our staff, our administrators are supporting without state funding. So it's, I think it's hard to be critical of faculty and staff and administrators who work hard uh, and are efficient and educate literally 10 percent uh, of the students that we have without getting any state support. It's hard, it's, I think it's, it, it, it's hard to be critical uh, of, uh, of, the, of the pay and the support that those people provide for these students. Yeah, I, you know, if, if, if I think the most important thing to me is what are we really doing in terms of the endeavors of, of higher ed? Mm -hmm. We're training, I hear it from employers all the time, they want students, they want employees that can think, mm -hmm. that can communicate, they can compute, they can think analytically, and they can work with other people in teams, in groups. Alex, that, that is a great segue. That's what we do. That's a great segue to the other part of the conversation that, that we should have. And that is, let's talk about what you all are doing it, right now, despite the circumstances we've just talked about, in preparing that new workforce and some of the exciting, innovative things that are going on. Right. What are you most proud of? So for, for the UC and for mm -hmm. UC Davis more, more specifically, we are very proud for the quality of the students we have graduated and for their contributions to the society, but we are also very proud for the knowledge we have created and for the products and services and, that have made it out there and for the economic development that we have really led the, the state Give into. Give us a specific example. So, for example, um, the, the uh, state contribution to UC Davis is close to 300 million. Our own budget is close to 3.4 billion and the economic impact that last year UC Davis had in, in the state and the region was close to seven billion. So you have a 20 to one output from an institution that has really changed the outlook for the city of Davis and the city of Sacramento. And, it, and UC Davis is the 20th most successful institution in the country in we terms are, of bringing um, research dollars? Uh, in the top 10, top as 10, a matter of fact. 10. And we are in the top 10 also overall as an institution in terms mm -hmm. of quality. So for the UC, it's not just creating the workforce, but also participating in creating innovation and in participating in economic development and participating in outreach. So the UC and UC Davis more specifically is a land grant university. In fact, this is the 150th anniversary this year that we have for the land grant universities. Mm -hmm. We were created to help the society, first of all, become educated and then second, create, uh, uh, acquire the skills. So that we develop the economy and we have people who have a better quality of life. And that was the reason President Lincoln instituted that concept. Right, and you all have done some innovative things in terms of birthing companies. Uh, one of my fellows uh, works for a company called Synapsense, mm -hmm. and that corporation was birthed out of some work that you At UC Davis. Yes. And so UC Davis, since it was created as mm -hmm. a university in the late 50s, it has really made a big difference in the economy of the state. First, it started with the agriculture. Mm -hmm. We have the, the school, uh, one that the first school of agriculture in the state, and that has really changed the economy with the wine industry, with uh, the tomato industry. In fact, you take the, any of the 20 top um, agricultural firms, and then you will see in the state that our university had a big uh, impact on them. So in the area of food, if you like, we have had an impact not just in the region and the state, but in the U.S. and around the world. 
UC Davis is very well known in other countries because of the impact we've had for so many years through our the work of our faculty and, and the, the work of our center, students. The new center, I know that the Mondavis have been very mm -hmm. gracious to UC Davis and there, there's in the arts the Mondavi Center, right. but there's also a fairly new institute on food, right? Right, food science and mm -hmm. wine. And that was established by Marguerite and Robert Mandavi. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, in fact, have some new facilities that show how you can uh, process food in a way that you conserve energy and water. And these are very forward-looking ideas that can really reform and revolutionize the industry. Now, you two, the, the UC and the community colleges, you all have a new integrated program, don't you? Well, we're, we're uh, trying to, cap we, it's our responsibility to try to respond to the science that goes on at the university and mm -hmm. the management training that goes on at, at California State and provide the workforce. So uh, there's a tremendous amount of science uh, being done at the university in clean and green technology. And we have new programs at each of our colleges in solar and in wind and in biofuels that are designed to provide a workforce for the science that's being created at the university. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and the relationship we have with with Sac State and all the healthcare fields and nursing, again, uh, the the higher ed community in the greater Sacramento region works together together better probably than than any other major metropolitan area that, that I'm of which I'm aware. Absolutely, this is a unique uh, combination of universities and educational institutions. Mm -hmm. You got a major research institution that's worldwide mm -hmm. uh, that has a reputation, and a major. Uh, California State University that really does focus in mm -hmm. on, uh, we're regionally based by the way, 85 percent of our students come from this area and more importantly they stay here. Right. So our alums are everywhere and at the level that they have a huge impact not only on the economic condition of, of Sacramento and the region but on the social life as well. Mm -hmm. They stay here and then you have a community college district that's one of the biggest and best in the state. So it's really kind of unique, and we do operate and work together. Our students work at UC Davis. Right. Um, I know. noticed that all, uh, all of your institutions are taking a greater role and a greater hand in playing a, uh, uh, playing a part in the economic recovery of this region. Uh, any examples of where that's really coming to the fore? Well, we're, we're huge employers, so we have a big stake in the region. Uh, we have 7,000 employees in Los Rios, and, and, and most of those are, are very high value, high uh, intellect jobs, uh, and, and so we're heavily involved in the next economy movement because it's important for all of us to be on the cutting edge of what this region sees itself becoming, and so we can then provide the science, the research, the uh, management and the workforce preparation mm -hmm. for the region uh, as it grows and thrives. So I wanted to speak about a program, in fact, and I will come to uh, the economic development, a program that we have with community colleges, which is the transfer program for the UC and UC Davis. One third of our incoming students are transfer students. And in fact, to really highlight the, the value of this program, we have for the first time um, a community college built in the center of our campus. So we have the um, Los Rios Community College, uh, part of the Sacramento City Community College that it is in West Village. So mm. the uh, community college students can use our facilities and can mingle with our students and whenever they are ready to transfer they will be able to integrate in, in our culture and community a lot better. This is a wonderful program for the UC and talking about economic development, these students after they graduate not only they can be um, very productive members of the workforce, but also they can start their own company. So that's where UC really, and UC Davis is, is coming into the picture. We create the innovation ecosystem so our students and faculty can take new ideas and start companies, or we can bring other companies from the outside. And I think that interest of bringing together um, groups and smaller companies or medium sized or even larger companies that want to relocate some of the research facilities can create a very exciting environment that can create new jobs for people, it could lead into new products and can really bring economic development to this region that is so important. And, and the one more thing, that we have a tremendous opportunity right now. Food is one of the biggest problems in the state, in the US and around the world. And this region has really done so much in this area in terms of 
graduating the workforce in terms of creating new knowledge mm -hmm. in a very important area that can bring a lot of money to the region. And I think we all can work together to make this happen. All right. In our final moments, I just wanted to go around the table. You each have about 10 seconds. And what I'd like to know is, what is it that you want this region to take away from this conversation in terms of higher education's role in developing and being a, a fully active member in this community? And what would you like people to do to get more involved? So first of all, I would like to look forward and say that we have a tremendous opportunity for uh, the three universities or university systems to come together and work with the region and the state as a matter of fact, to really bring back to the state the energy and the conditions that made it a great state in, okay. in the US. Alex? I think Sac State is uh, on the road to be the flagship of the, of the California State University in, in the sense of it's an example of what a really good regional university can do in the city of Sacramento and that works for the region. All right. For us, it's all about access. American mm -hmm. River College, Cosumnes River, Folsom Lake, and Sacramento City uh, are here to, uh, to provide an education for anybody who can benefit. And, and uh, yes, we're in tough times right now, but uh, the resources will come back and we want people to plan early and, and enroll in college and, and uh, that'll be a pathway to a better life. All right. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you. thank you. That's our show. And thanks to our guests. And thanks to you for watching. For Studio Sacramento, I'm Scott Syfax. See you next time right here on KVIE. I'm James Beckwith, President and CEO of Five Star Bank. As a community bank, we believe that open dialogue about the issues affecting our region is vitally important. From the economy to the environment to social issues, we look forward to the conversations and hope you'll join in.